Uh, my name is Peter Ferretto, and I teach at uh, the Chinese University of Hong Kong, and I'm collaborating with Hang Man Zhou from the Seoul National University. Uh, I've known Hang Man for a long time. We used to teach together. I used to work at Seoul National University, so it's very nice to be here. Thank you, John. And first of all, really thank you for the Biennale for inviting us here. I must say that the, the quality of the output that I've seen, the lectures, and especially the booklet, the graphic work is just amazing. It's always nice to return to a place where, you know, design, graphism, and um, content is all together. Uh, the lecture that, um, well, it's not really a lecture, it's, it's kind of some thoughts that of what, what we've been doing. We, we are at a very early stage, we've just started for the last three weeks and the brief that we've given to the students or at least we've I've given to my students and Hangman is sort of uh, working around as well or interpreting in his own way is transforming reality and um, what's fantastic I think about this booklet that I got and I started to read it as a PDF was that in the opening sentence there's this amazing quotation by Italo Calvino and I think it's a question about uh, what kind of city do we want and he's writing about the fact that um, it's the everyday city, it's the hidden city, it's the um, city that we've forgotten. And I think actually even before I read this, this was exactly the brief that we were trying to do with the students. So to see that reinforces this kind of belief that um, something is in the air that people are thinking about. I'd just like to introduce our school, this is, this is our building. I don't know if any of you have been there. Um, it's an architectural school, it's got a common space, it's got reviews, but I think one of the most important things is this slide, and I'm sure my director would never show this slide. Uh, it's taken on the 22nd of September 19, uh, 2014, which is the coincides with the umbrella movement in Hong Kong. And this is all instigated by the students. And what you have here is um, they're fighting for universal suffrage, which is many of the things that I think are common in this Biennale. And it started here. Many of the people that were protesting were students from CUHK, and many of them were from the Faculty of Architecture. And I think the, um, the care they took to put their political statements, they, would, they didn't graf graffiti the, the walls like they would do in Italy in 1968. They did them on paper, beautiful calligraphy yet the statement is very strong. Uh, the, um, w the topic that we're looking at is the residual, and we don't have any work on, uh, on Seoul because we've just come here, but we have some thoughts that we are bringing from Hong Kong. And um, in many terms, you all know Hong Kong, I'm sure, but it's an accidental city. It's, I think it was never meant to be, it was a concession uh, from the Chinese to the, um, the British Empire in um, 1841. Uh, and in, a, in, in many ways, it's um, high density, but it's an extremely engineered city. And what you see here is a map showing the reclaimed land since uh, 1905. So you can see the extent of the land that has been reclaimed. And what comes with this engineering city is a byproduct. And this is the residual that we are looking at, is that all these spaces that are somehow forgotten and that are ex used in extreme ways because of the density and the condition that Hong Kong is. And you can see here the sea, which is probably the biggest asset that Hong Kong has, is an asset that cannot be used because of these viaducts. And it's an extreme city in terms of its efficiency. It's extremely functional, and therefore, where would you put the, um, the viaduct but on the sea where you can achieve the greatest speed of, of traffic? And what it does generate is this incredible, and this is what we term a condition, of everything kind of working at the same time. So you've got an underpassage here, you've got um, a road, you've got a highway above for the MTR, and then you've got people trying to transfer you know, cross it and transverse it. The notion of the residual is by far no nothing new. Uh, many people have spoken about it, and actually a friend of mine, Mark Brosso, who's here, gave me the first article that I ever read on this by a Catalan writer uh, called Sola Morales, and his, his essay called Terrain Vague. But 
What Sola Morales talks about is more a condition which should be kept, and he argues that all these residual conditions and the pores and the urban pores should be something that should be retained and not filled in. And one of the kind of thesis that we have is that maybe these, um, these residual spaces are like ready-mades that they are just waiting to be plugged in. It's conditions that could be like Marcel Duchamp, you could get an object and just look at it in a different way and then it could uh, generate another meaning. Uh, over a year, a year and a half now, we've been cataloging these conditions. So we have more than um, 150 of these residual conditions. We're about to make a book, which you can see here. And I just want to show you one of these conditions that I think exemplifies how a, a residual space is used in, um, in Hong Kong. And the important fact is that they're not designed. They just happen and people appropriate them. This is Shake Wan. It's on the east side of Hong Kong Island. And it's an area which used to be a harbor. It used to be where the, the pirates used to live in the, uh, in the beginning of the century. And what you see in red is actually reclaimed land. But back in 1970, this was a shanty town. So the harbor that you see in the red was actually um, this condition here. And what happens here is that that line, that red line, uh, funnily enough, on the right of the image in this area here is all the reclaimed land. And then that red line that we've looked at is still inhabited and used. And most importantly, is still used by the, the, the market. And the reason for this is that it used to be the line of the sea. So people are still using the vestiges and the traces of what used to be there. So old people still use this land. And it doesn't matter if this land is underneath a viaduct. It has some importance to them. And you find temples and you find people appropriating these spaces. So this is the market and this is the local festival that happens on the same street. And then you can see here uh, the, the, the viaduct space that is now used as a bus depot. But the more you zoom in, you keep seeing how people inhabit this. And you can just see there in black and white at the front, there's this kind of leftover tree. And I think this is, for me, embodies how the residual is embodied and appropriated. So you have here the, the bus depot. The, the officer has his um, office. He needs plants to make a better atmosphere. He has his temple to Tin Hao, and at the same time, he has the lockers. And you can just see in the background the concrete viaduct. So these are some of the things that we have in. Um, another byproduct of the shanty towns that have now gone is that the temples remain because the temples are sacred, and still to this day, people use them. So we've been looking at them, trying to draw them, one of the students that is here today helped me draw these conditions. And I think by drawing them, you can kind of try to understand how, how they all work, uh, how the elements work together. And it's, if you go back to here, it's very difficult to see, but there's, there's a tree here that, of course, is somehow sacred. And the tree is kind of invading the temple, but would break it. So they coexist by putting some kind of structure on top. Um, the brief that we're looking at is very much related to trade. So we've selected an area in uh, oh, the three sites is site B. And we're interested to see if these residual spaces could be used in terms of reactivating some of the existing trades or trades that are lost in these residual conditions. Um, trades like printing. Uh, like um, sewing and, um, and, con and textiles, and also seeing how these trades are changing. And so how clothes are made now is very different from how they used to be made with these blueprints. Now things can actually be, your body can be scanned. But also looking at the old print, and of course what everyone is talking about. Um, there was uh, an incredible exhibition running, I think it's still running in Milan, that I, I was lucky to see, called Make, uh, Making is Thinking, Thinking is Making. And it's showing the how Korean craft is adapting to the 21st century. And keeping and retaining this beautiful quality. And are just some examples of the products that uh, people are making in Seoul. 
and I think this one is incredible. This is a person, I think, working around the Dondermoon area of reusing plastics, and with these plastics, he's making furniture, the traditional elements. And the process in which we're working, I'm zooming through these slides because I don't want to overpass my time, is um, very much a methodology that I set, and then the students uh, are, all the creativity is coming from them. So I'm simply steering a process and they're fitting in and then coming up with their creative ideas. So we're looking, each student has to pick a trade and then the trade is picked before they come. And uh, so they're doing the research on this work without knowing the site, without seeing the residual condition. So one student here is looking at fermentation. And then after generating an image of what the space would be without seeing the site. So we're trying to s see if the, the, the conceptual approach could be um, uh, in a way not related to reacting to context. We're trying to take preconditions away, looking at the purity of the idea, generating a space that of course will look nothing like the products or the images that we will make or the designs that we will make, but come in here with a, a very conceptualized idea of what a school for trade could be. And I'll just run through many, some 12 examples. A uh, student looking at furniture and how that space could be, looking at uh, appropriating residual spaces, printing and the spaces. So we, we very much researched all the background that we could find uh, before we arrive here on the specific trade that each student will look at. So this is a textile image, jewelry, 3D printing and how that would look like. A student looking at lighting and how their spaces would be. Glass, paper. And in a way, these images and this research is like the DNA of what we're about to go. And now we're going to look at the site. And we've selected uh, site B. And just finally to conclude is that I have a little history with this. I think it was shown before there was a competition for this site. And um, I entered this and uh, we received a prize with basically a, a one a one dimensional project which was to create a line. And uh, we got third prize for this and I think many of the people didn't understand our scheme because they thought it was, kind of the, the red was kind of symbolic but it, it wasn't. So thank you very much. So uh, my name is Hengman Zhou from the Seoul National University. We are teaming with uh, Peter Farato. I didn't know that I, I have to present in English, but I'm speaking broken English, so I hope that you guys understand better than I speaking. Um, my side of the stu studio will uh, basically kind of share the you know ideas of trans transforming reality and then re rigid your, you know conditions of the rigid area, but you know. Today I'm I'm going to you know speaking about a little more uh, general uh, my personal th thought about the, you know how to dealing with the, you know this project as a you know kind of for the future kind of urban city you know developments so that starting with the, some sort of duality thing the which are kind of configure the work consisted to the work so there's the two pairs of you know the the words that you know, which are kind of contrasted or sometimes reciprocal and you know interact each other, like answers and questions, phenomenon and essence, means and ends, product and process. Sometimes, some era is a product is more important than process, but the, you know, in the other era is the process is more focused on than product, so that. We can a little bit, you know, selectively choose which way we we have to focus on based on, you know, the situation and that we are aim for the future. So we are kind of out of a you know material production age, and then we are kind of sort of in the intellectual production age. But the you know as I wrote it in the Korean in the bottom, in the material production age, we always you know end up with the garbages, but the in the intellectual production age, like this age, but the, we are not using body anymore. 
my uh, present presentation is a little bit scattered, but uh, you know, but you may understand the overall kind of flows and streams. So that there's in infrastructures and sp sup superstructures, but it sometimes is changing, like economy and then you know religions and then, but the architecture and then the ur urban you know fabrics we always kind of consider that as an infrastructure, but why don't you just uh, thinking about the architecture urbanism as a superstructure and science and religions, but the sometimes sci science is existing to prove the value of the religions, facts and values. So that, you know, Peter uh, talking about the, the realities, but the, you know, basically I'm thinking that there's a two kinds of reality, realities in the world and, the, and then architectures. So that, you know, in Korean, this is a Korean, 답정, no. So that 답은 정해져 있고, 너는 대답만 하면 돼. It's a, it's a kind of, it says, it's a kind of, kind of mock that reality as a asexual reproductions. It's kind of forced reality. We are living in the forced reality, you know. So that, you know, in the movie Matrix, like 1999, uh, the Mo Mopius kind of, kind of suggests two kinds of two colored pills to the Leo. But the, at that time, he said that, you know, if you take the, the green one, you will see the, the reality what what we want to believe and then if you take the uh, red one you will see that the, the real truth so that the the real it is kind of composed of two kinds of between the interactions and then kind of interacting each other so that through the you know urban histories we we're talking about utopia dystopia then now heterotopias you know these photos you know the the Kim Tae type of girl in the in the bubble is kind of utopia, which it doesn't exist in the reality. But the, you know, the reflections on the mirror is kind of herself could be kind of dystopia. I I, I want to be a kind of that the beautiful woman, and then the mirror itself is a kind of heterotopia. It's kind of it's not existed, but in there and then kind of affect us. So that I I think that the architecture and the city could be kind of working as you know those things, kind of middle type of thing, between the, the, the truth and then, you know, what we want to believe. And then it mediates those two kinds of realities. And then maybe through that, you know, architecture and the cities, maybe we, we can just uh, make design or, you know, develop the future cities as we intended to, as we dreamed of. <laughs> so that Architecture is for the future anyway. We are designing right now, we are researching it right now, but the, the thing is kind of established in the several years later. And then anyway, that's working in the future. But we kind of dreamed of many, many, many kinds of, you know, the futures in the, in the movies like Interstellar. And then city has been evolving, changing throughout the human histories from the one or two driving forces like politics and religions and abiosis, need, religions, protections, climate, vernacular, you know, nature, sceneries, and then materials, and then anti-urbanizations, and the survival, and then nature, sceneries, and then, and then all the, you know, the, the compound of all the things like economy and then culture and art and, you know, everything. And then driving forces for this evolvement, evolving is changing from the God to man to, you know, capital, capitalism and what that could be from now on to the future. I think that this time I'm, I'm looking at the kind of creative balance, kind of creative kind of circumstance that which we can use the in the hand and head and then our soul and everything all together. So the, then, what, what's the creativity, you know? So our, you know, 소설가 황석영, the Korean novelist, you know, he once wrote that 지루하면 죽음이고 저지르면 살아난다. The boredom is death and the comet survives. And then Mar Martin Heidegger, the region is starting from a strange encounter. You know, so that the create is, is a, used to be a kind of the area of God. But right now is when we create, it's creativity is, 
is kind of generated from the when we produce something. It's related to production. It's right now is human beings kind of area. So I think that the creativity composed of three things: innovation, imagination, and fantasies. That's kind of related to hand and head and the soul. So that you know, there's uh, you know these kind of things. You know, what 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 is the kind of creative things? You know, if you know, there's a food allergy and then you know the morning six. I think uh, you know food allergies is like a very um, one side of kind of one way of kind of reacting for the bad things but the you know the the morning six for the you know pregnant woman is that um, you know it's it's like a very tolerant immu immunologically tolerant very creative way of you know reacting to a certain you know different things that she suddenly got in in her bodies so there's a uh, you know so far, the, in the cities, everything's fragmented and then not connected. So we're uh, also looking at it, you know, communication and at work, and pure blood, and crossbreed. You know, the all the you know all the intellectual world is kind of divided into very uh, hard you know containers. You know, but we have to you know the network and crossover with the, you know, the, some sort of convergence and then hybrid and I don't know what that is, but, you know, that's, that's also, you know, we can imply to the, our, you know, architectural design as well, like transverse, you know, corridors in the, in the, in the you know, Pyeongar market thing. And then I also thinking about the, the individuals, the each person, so it's an individual, the, the concept of individual is the kind of modern concepts. You know, until like 300 years ago, there's no concept of the individuals, there's only class. So class auto automatically defines everything. You are, you are kind of attitude, your your way of thinking, and then you are a costume and all. But the, you know, the fashion, like modern products, is kind of came out of after you know the the individual concepts concept of individuals. So the and then individual is more innovative, as you know, like like Einstein and Steve Jobs. And then these days, there's no families. There's no 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 longer you know certain classes. You know maybe this is too excessive, but but um, I think that the future is kind of is there's a kind of group of individuals, and then then there's a kind of questions. Then how we can you know kind of last human beings. So live longer, live last, you know, forever. So that you know, thinking about the humanoid and the cyborg, you know, it's only the human beings are only species that they wants to be a, a machine. They wants to kind of, you know, hybrid hybrid with the machines. So that you know, the concept of you know the life of human being, I think, will be changed. The death, the concept of death, no longer be you know. Exist available in the future, so that right now we are kind of working on this situation, kind of visual domination, and every every job description has kind of working with the same type of kind of labor. But um, when you look at the you know this you know avatar, you know human bodies kind of extended through the you know robot through the you know avatar, and then you know something like that, so that. You know, with the individuals and then body things, the city should be kind of boost this kind of you know feature so that you know city of walkability, hikeability, bikeability. I think uh, we have to you know think about and because of the you know although our side Ilchiro area and Dongdaemun area, you know, Sangiche also presented the, the the way of the method of transportation like you know walking and then you know, bike and then you know. All motorcycles and the sumo vehicles so that the the city has to be you know evolved to utilize the you know the use of human bodies together with the a little bit machine you know hybridizations so that you know once you know the Oscar Niemeyer said that before he he's he's dead you know the he said that 
she should have you know, made a you know Brasilia as a kind of walking city rather than a, you know the city of you know, automobiles. So since uh, um, we have to you know anyway, we are no longer surviving in the you know wild natures. We have to live in the city you know with or without jobs, with or without money. So that we have to think about city, the 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 creative city. That I don't ha I hate this term terminology, but I couldn't find a you know better one. So <laughs> I will come up with it later on. But uh, you know it's it's not not like you know this kind of things. So I think I uh, you know the the concept of creative city that we our you know studios are looking for is that um, the the city of you know. A city where you know the each individuals can find the, you know everything, jobs, happiness, and food, and you know shelters, and you know everything. So that city of happy individuals, and then city of platforms. So we need uh, some some sort of spaces using the residual spaces, you know, like Peter Peretos looking at it and. I called it multifaceted encountering spaces. So that we need that kind of spaces in the city later on. It's, it's not like just a public space, public commodity or public commons. The, the space doesn't have uh, any own purposes, but it has some sort of kind of encountering, it kind of boosts some, some sort of encounterings, casual encounterings. So this this is the current situation. So I, I think uh, this is a new middle by age. This, this is this residential is, is kind of represents their classes. It's, it's the age of classes. But you know, thinking about the, these cities like Munnedong and Soho and then Orested North in Denmark and Silicon Valley, it has kind of different aspects. What that could be, you know, thinking about that. You know, kind of Korea, the Samsung, they always kind of set up the maximum in their models. But um, you know, this Google and Apple, they always set up the minimums, bottom lines. And then there, you know, the, the headquarters and then the working places has, you know, that kind of places. They always, you know, the care about the, the, the meeting space, casual encountering spaces with no purposes. And this is current situation with the functional, you know, normal office spaces. But the, you know, this uh, projects from the, you know, Sasaki, like Tech Town. So some sort of place as a you know urban catalyst, you know, some sort of place that you know people share together. But the you know the place where the the, the interactions and then what is it um, reactions and everything's kind of intensifying. So you're using the residual spaces in Ulchiro um, and then with the the analysis of trade, we are kind of inserting this kind of spaces together with the uh, other, you know, trade kind of learning center based on learning centers. So this is the pretty much uh, end of my presentation. This is the Ujiro, as you guys know that. So I think, I think this is uh, enough, right? I, I hand over my, the other.